Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to Crime Zone. Before we get to today's video, we wanted to announce that Crime Zone's official Patreon page is now live. In addition to ad-free videos and other extras, patrons will also get access to weekly bonus videos for our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International series. So if you want even more Crime Zone content, head over to patreon.com slash crimezone for exclusive cases not featured in today's video. Representatives from the California Highway Patrol say that a woman has been arrested this week after she was caught asleep and intoxicated behind the wheel of her Tesla while the vehicle drove on autopilot. The incident reportedly took place around 11 p.m. on September 16th while the woman and her vehicle were traveling along the 134 freeway in the Glendale area. Police were alerted to the situation by the woman's husband who was following her Tesla in another vehicle. The Tesla was witnessed hitting a roadside wall, but continued moving as the woman remained unconscious inside. The vehicle finally came to a standstill after officers overtook it in their patrol cars, triggering an automatic stop. The woman was taken into custody on suspicion of DUI and was reportedly still asleep at the time her car was pulled over. She has since been identified as 31-year-old Carla Villanueva and was booked into the Metropolitan Detention Center jail. Authorities in Baldwin County, Alabama, say that a local high school student is facing criminal charges this week after they were accused of stealing one of the school's fire extinguishers as part of a viral TikTok challenge. The so-called Devious Licks challenge spread widely across the social media platform earlier this month and reportedly involves students stealing or damaging school property in order to get likes and shares on TikTok. The student at Robertsdale High School was allegedly caught committing the theft by the building's surveillance cameras and was promptly suspended. However, similar crimes are reportedly gaining attention elsewhere. This week, a 15-year-old student in Florida's Polk County was also arrested after filming a video of themselves damaging property in a boys' bathroom at Bartow High School. Two soap dispensers, valued at $45 each, were removed from the wall of the bathroom. One had been thrown in a sink, while the other was missing entirely. It appeared that damage had also been done to one of the bathroom toilets. The student was arrested after the Bartow Police Department began an investigation, and a video of the suspect with the stolen property was found. TikTok has responded to the incident by banning the Devious Licks hashtag, as well as other hashtags associated with the challenge. Baltimore police say that a man is in custody this week after leading officers on a wild chase that ended with the suspect jumping into a harbor on the Patapsco River. According to reports, the pursuit began at approximately 7.30 p.m. on September 18th when police attempted to pull over a stolen vehicle being driven by the suspect in South Baltimore. The man refused to stop and tried to escape, hitting several cars in the process. After crashing at the corner of East Patapsco Avenue and St. Victor Street, the suspect fled on foot, eventually stealing a police cruiser that had been stopped by an officer who was chasing him on foot. The second vehicle pursuit took police through the Riverside and Locust Point neighborhoods until once again the suspect jumped out of the vehicle and began running. He was chased to the Tide Point area, where he was finally apprehended after jumping into the harbor. The man was seen being led away from the area in handcuffs around 8.30 p.m. At the time of this recording, no information has been released about the man's identity, and it's unknown what charges he will be facing. Representatives from Virginia's Brunswick County Sheriff's Office say that they are conducting an investigation into an illicit package this week, after it was found accidentally dropped on the grounds of a local private school instead of the nearby prison where the culprits intended. The incident began just before 8.30 a.m. on September 13th, when officers received a call about the suspicious package from an employee at Brunswick Academy, a private school in Lawrenceville. When police arrived, they opened the package, discovered that it contained marijuana, tobacco, and cell phones, and quickly determined that it had actually been destined for the nearby Lawrenceville Correctional Center. The same employee that called in the report told police that nearly three hours before the discovery of the package, they had witnessed a drone land on the property of the school. A short time later, the drone had been retrieved by some people in a dark-colored sedan. 
According to reports, illicit drone deliveries of this kind are not uncommon in the area, and the sheriff's office has received a number of calls this year about similar criminal activity. At the current time, no arrests have been made and the situation is still under investigation by police, as well as the Virginia Department of Corrections. Authorities in Dunn County, Wisconsin, say the two men are in custody this week following the discovery of a brutal quadruple murder last Sunday. According to reports, the incident began on the afternoon of September 12th when police received a call about dead bodies found in an SUV. The vehicle had been parked and abandoned in a cornfield in the town of Sheridan. The four victims were all residents of Minnesota with no known connections to the area. Each reportedly died from gunshot wounds. The victims have since been identified as 26-year-old Matthew Pettis, 35-year-old Lois Foreman III, 30-year-old Jasmine Sturm, and 30-year-old Natasha Flug Presley. Further investigation revealed that the four victims had last been seen leaving a bar in St. Paul on the night of September 11th and were witnessed getting into a vehicle and driving off. Thanks to a tip about two suspicious vehicles seen in the Sheridan area before the bodies were discovered, authorities were able to obtain surveillance video from a gas station and convenience store, giving them vital information about the identities of the two suspects. A short time later, it was reported that police had arrested 56-year-old Darren McWright, also known as Darren Osborne. At the same time, they announced that they were looking for a second man, 38-year-old Antoine Suggs. His Arizona ID card was allegedly found in the SUV along with the bodies. Suggs remained at large for a couple of days, but turned himself into authorities in Arizona on September 17th. He and McWright have now both been charged with four counts of hiding a corpse, but more serious charges are expected to follow. As far as what motivated the crime, few details have been reported to the public at the current time. The only known connection between the suspects and the victims is that Suggs would occasionally fly in from Arizona to visit Natasha Flug Presley. Representatives from Indiana's Vanderburg County Sheriff's Office say that a 61-year-old Evansville man will spend the next two months in jail after he repeatedly abused the 911 system by calling and informing dispatchers that he was tired. According to reports, the incident took place on the evening of September 14th, when Daniel Schroeder made four of the bizarre phone calls to 911, informing them of his sleepy state. Finally, police got tired of dealing with him and went to his house and placed him under arrest. Authorities soon learned that this was not the first time that Schroeder had abused the 911 system. Just days earlier, he had pleaded guilty to a misuse of the system for calling to say that he was unhappy with a relative who was not following his rules. He was ordered to spend six months in jail for that offense, but the sentence was suspended, provided that he did not repeat the crime. It seems that Schroeder couldn't help himself, though. A day after his arrest, the 61-year-old pled guilty to violating the terms of his release and was sentenced to spend 60 days behind bars. His original sentence was amended to 60 days as well, and it is said that Schroeder will serve both of them concurrently. Hopefully, he'll have plenty of time to rest while locked up. Authorities in Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania, say that a 25-year-old dad-to-be has been arrested this week after he shot three people at a baby shower for his unborn child. According to reports, the incident took place around 6 p.m. on September 18th at the Kinluck Fire Hall in Lower Burrell, where the celebration was being hosted. It allegedly began when the expectant father, Isaiah Hampton, was asked by a woman to transport gifts after the party was over. Witnesses say that Hampton grew abusive toward the woman and pushed her backwards after she slapped him in the face. It's unclear if she was the mother of the unborn child. The shocking scene caused several people to intervene who began to walk towards Hampton as he fell to the ground and pulled out a 9mm handgun. At least three men were in a wrestling match with Hampton when he started to fire the gun. A 23-year-old man, a 16-year-old boy, and a 19-year-old woman were all shot in the ensuing chaos, though thankfully all of them appear to have suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Eventually, the people struggling with Hampton managed to get the weapon away from him and the police were called. Hampton was taken into custody outside the fire hall without further incident. At the time of this recording, police are still investigating the crime, but say that Hampton is now facing numerous charges, including three first-degree felony counts of aggravated assault, one second-degree felony count of aggravated assault, and one misdemeanor count of recklessly endangering another person. 
Hampton's bond has been set at $250,000 and he remains in custody at the Westmoreland County Prison. A chilling update was given in the case of a 22-year-old missing woman this week when authorities announced that human remains matching her description had been found in a Wyoming national park. According to reports, police discovered what are believed to be the remains of Gabby Petito on September 19th during a search of the Spread Creek Dispersed Camping Area in Bridger Teton National Forest on the eastern edge of Grand Teton National Park. However, an official confirmation will not be made until an autopsy can be conducted. The tragic story began as an exciting summer road trip when Gabby and her 23-year-old fiancé Brian Laundrie set out in her white Ford van in June to explore the American West. The couple planned to head all the way out to the coast and visit several state national parks along the way. Gabby had been excited to share the journey with friends, family, and others on social media and had made frequent posts to her accounts during the trip. She also stayed in regular contact with her family. However, that all changed at the end of August, when Gabby stopped communicating abruptly. In the lead-up, everything reportedly seemed normal. Gabby FaceTimed with her mother on the 24th and told her that she was leaving Utah and heading to the Teton Range in Wyoming. Over the next few days, they continued to exchange frequent texts until on August 30th, the family received one final message that simply said, no service in Yosemite. Things got more suspicious when Gabby's fiance, Brian Laundrie, returned alone to the Northport, Florida home where they lived with his parents. Though there was no sign of Gabby, Laundrie was still in possession of the white van. More than a week later, on September 11th, Gabby's family, who live in New York, reported her missing after still failing to get in contact with her. They reportedly reached out for information when they learned that Brian had returned home alone, but were completely stonewalled by the laundry family, who refused to answer any questions. On September 17th, after days of both police and Gabby's family pleading with the laundry family for information, the case took another turn, when Brian's family called police to report that they had not seen him in several days. He reportedly told his parents that he was headed to the Carlton Reserve in Venice, Florida, but never returned. At the time of this recording, searches of the area have been conducted, but his whereabouts are unknown. A search of the laundry property has also been carried out, but it's unclear what, if anything of value to the case has been recovered. At the same time that much of the latest news was reported, authorities also announced that there had been a police encounter between Gabby, Bryan, and officers in Moab, Utah. The interaction allegedly happened on August 12th, following some sort of physical altercation between the couple. Officers spoke to Gabby and Brian separately, but neither of them wanted to press charges. Each reportedly told police that they were in love and engaged to be married, and that they didn't want anything to happen to the other one. Police later said that Gabby seemed confused and emotional, and that on their advice, the couple separated for the night. At the time of this recording, police say that they desperately want to speak with Brian Laundrie. So far, he's not been charged with a crime, but that could change as new information continues to come in. That's it for this edition of Crimes of the Week. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. Thank you for watching.